Are we ready with the film? Yeah. All set. I'm going to make a few minor changes to the agenda. Uh, I'm going to put Mr. Weiss first because he's going to address us and I want to make sure he gets home before the darkness comes. Understood. And then, and then we'll have public input. We can hear a gentleman or from the contractors to yes, be able to make some statements and then we'll move the bid award um, that, that dealt with that, we'll put that up there, and then we'll go into the regular the rest of the meeting. So we can get everything done uh, in a timely fashion. Anyone have any objection to these adjustments? No. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Weiss, please come forward. And, uh, thank you. It doesn't seem fair, it's right against the one. <laughs> Sure, man. Well, I came here today for thank you for your attention to this matter. Uh, I started the great search, and unfortunately, age has hit us. My wife as well as myself. We can't move anymore, <laughs> dragging the hoses around to water the grass. And uh, so I'm going to put it into the sprinkler system. We have a relatively small lot. Uh, but what I hear from, from people from the water department and from this contractor who puts the water sprinkler system in, uh, I got shocked by the amount of water we use. Um, the gentleman who was over at my house from the water department across the street, uh, measured the pound per square inch pressure and he said it's about 10 gallons a minute. Uh, so when you add this all up, you get over the 15 unit. Then we have for the next 15 unit is the highest rate of all the six rates you have. And it is considerably higher than the original rate. Uh, of three dollars and ten point one oh three. Um, then the next one is eight dollars and seven six nine. So for fifteen units each, you would need you would need forty six dollars for the first bunch of 15 units. For the second bunch, it's $131.53 for a total of 178 or an average of $5.936 if you average it out. That is a rate which is 280 times, 280 percent over the original rate. And that kind of shocked me. And then I looked at the other rates, and the other rates are lower to begin with. Even the all over rate we have at the bottom of, of the list is only uh, four dollars and something. So, what my point is really when you use water for irrigation, you should have an irrigation rate. How do you establish an irrigation rate? And why? Uh, first thing comes to mind is what comes out of the faucet goes down a drain. So we have water and sewer. But what comes out of an irrigation system would only end up on the lawn and not in the sewer. So my point is the justification for the irrigation rate, which would be lower than the eight dollars and seventy-seven cents, uh, is that you could take the two borders, which are the lowest in the year, which is freezing or cold, very low water, anyway, and then put, uh, deduct that from the total use in the peak months of the year. In, in other words, two borders is probably with water in and two borders without, to be realistic. Now, if you would assume, and I don't know if I'm correct, uh, that the cost of water is one item and the cost of the sewer is another. If we split the two and in half, 
So with the rate of, of the second tier uh, of um, four dollars and something, one could swallow it. What do you think about it? Let me just give you a little background. Yeah. Everyone can give their answers. In Barrington, the sewer is, is it's a separate enterprise fund. Uh, we yeah. have nothing to do. You're it's not like, like a joint water sewer. Yeah. So this is the county water supply. We have we do not build. The town of Barrington takes our records for the winter quarter, and that's what they use four times. But that's when you're not watering the lawn yeah. and you're not washing your car. They take four times the winter. They get a bill from each province because we have a mm -hmm. regional system in each province. Yeah. We have a meter on all the effluent that flows to each province. So that's how they know how much Barrington has contributed to the overall treatment mm -hmm. of, of, and that's how they make the bill. Yeah. And if you if you're not connected, they give you the average rate. I and see. If you have a well, they just give you the average rate. But but that's that was set up. I know that because I was on the council and we set all that up back yeah. in the seventies. So it's a separate animal altogether. Altogether, right? That's good to know. <laughs> but it's not—it's not like we're a water sewer, yeah, a clean yeah. water and sewer department. Mr. Yeah. Chairman, just if I may add, sure. that is in the town of Warren, they're not billed any sewer charge. Oh, it's just so in your in your tax and belong tax. There's no sewer charge. Well, so, in Warren, there's no, no in Barrington, you have a separate. And whatever charge. action we take has to affect all three towns. That's right. Uh, That's right. Yeah, yeah. In Barrington, you get an enterprise, you get a separate. I don't know about charge. Bristol. Does Bristol have a sewer charge? Yes. Warren doesn't. Okay. Just because it's about four years old. Four or five years old. So that's, that's one of the problems. That's one of the problems. It's all. <laughs> However, we should talk about what's, what's planned. Maybe you want to talk about where we're going next. Can I ask a question before that? Yes. Because we're looking at the schedule of the census of payments, there's only one time in the last two years when we went over 15. But he's talking about putting in... Oh, this is for the future. Sprinkler system. Yeah. Okay. For the future. I don't have it yet. <laughs> Sorry. Look at outside the don't need it. Right. To, to, to leave the law as it is, it's half day. It's half day. Uh, uh, it looks awful, and uh, our neighbors have sprinkler systems. I have that uh, for years, and you don't see a lot of black bread. <laughs> but um, my wife said I can't do it anymore, and uh, she's also over 80. I'm 85, so you see my point, right? That um, that I have to get to a more economical <laughs> way to do it. The problem with the rates is the way yes, they originally the rate is kind they of were set up as a conservation rate to get people to not water their lawns. That was a big part of why the rate is so high to begin with. The idea is that the basic rate is for your basic needs. Mm -hmm. Anything over and above that is not critical to your use. That's so, true. Yeah. So that's charging a much higher rate. Mm -hmm. But in the future, though, we're, we did look at going, and the, the other rates are tied to very high consumptions for industry yeah, yeah. and so on. So they are. Right, we're back to 310. Right. So it's kind of the industrial rate is built into one mm -hmm. schedule. In the future, we're going to go to a separate schedule for commercial and industrial. What is the future? And we're looking at next year, probably next year. as of April. Uh, next March 1st. March 1st. We're, we've already investigated revising our schedules, and that higher rate will be coming down. Mm -hmm. um, that 77 rate. Right. Yeah. So it will be lower than it is now, although our base rate will probably be, we'll, well have a very say. low base base rate, then we'll have actually an intermediate rate, and then our high rate, which is essentially called a conservation rate, won't mm -hmm. be as high as it is now. Yeah. Well, it, it's, 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 it's true that uh, one shouldn't waste water because it's a critical resource which we have uh, and it's going to be a more critical resource in the years to come. So I asked that question to the irrigation builder and he said, well, you don't water your lawn every day, number one. You go and you 
part of the system would be a gauge, and I don't know how it works, which measures the rain which comes and would reduce the, the use of water uh, from the uh, from the Bristol County Water <coughs> um, So that is one step in the right direction. Um, but if we have global warming, which we obviously have, I mean, you see it on the Eskimos, uh, you see it in the Alps, you see it in the Himalayas. These rivers, which are huge, which come out of them, like the Yangtze River in, in China, that's all water from, from, the, from the mountains. That comes down. Greenland, if you fly over it today, is greener, <laughs> greener on the sides uh, than it was maybe 50 years ago. Uh, the glaciers were all covering everything, not anymore. So water is a critical resource if we want to keep humanity alive. But I don't want my own to be complete, then I want it to survive. <laughs> but you want to be able to just minimally water it. You don't really need a lot of water, yeah. but just to keep a, usually what you have is a moisture gauge yeah. that's tied into the irrigation system so it wouldn't overwater your no, water to no. make sure you just get the minimum and yeah. not anything extra. But I would conserve water anyway. Uh, the average for my household is 900 uh, cubic feet in three months. It was the last month, it was almost every, every, every quarter was 900 cubic feet. So I had a little cushion here until 15, <laughs> 600, uh, but I'm afraid that might <coughs> not be enough and may bankrupt me. Um, because you know, I'm on a fixed income, which brings nothing. You know, what you have in the bank is 0.5%, which is less, far less than the inflation rate. So keeping this in mind that it has to last, uh, last a while, as, at least as long as we live. So any help you can extend would be greatly appreciated. It, it, it sounds to me like this year you'll pay you pay more than you'd like to pay. Yes. But next it year will be that way. But next year not yet. But next year it it will come down. Yeah. Well if you do that, it, it, it's one step which comes down to those. <laughs> um, which is perfectly understandable. I, I heard uh, I, I don't know if it was you Mr. Clapper who said uh, make your rent trying to get three rates, right? Yeah, it'll be three three different categories. Three, uh, but if you can expand this a little bit, let's say instead of fifteen units at three ten, and then the next uh, until the three thousand uh, three thousand uh, no three hundred units, uh, the eight plant rate that would already help. You know, it's uh, it's just uh, you can approach it in several ways. You can approach it from the point of spreading the number of rates, uh, reducing the 877, uh, and bringing more in line than it's in an average. Um, many ways to, to approach it. We have used, we've used a national consultant, a rate oh, consultant. Mm -hmm. That's how we uh, decided this past year mm -hmm. to go in this direction. Uh, obviously, he lives in California. <laughs> so we have we have the background from the national yeah. consultant, and undoubtedly we'll check with him again before we get to the point. Mm -hmm. We had to delay things a year because of the computer system. Mm -hmm. The new computer system goes in now, should be online later on this year, and then we'll be in a position to deal to with this. Mm -hmm. yeah. But certainly, we're uh, happy that you came in and chatted with us, Good. and we'll keep that in mind. Any other comments? My only concern if you use it, <clears throat> try to build separate for irrigation, <clears throat> you'd have to have a separate metering system. Well, yes, yeah, I, in a way you're, you're right, but you could also approach it uh, in a different way by, scale. Set, uh, by yes. standardizing and seeing what any household, what, what is their usage per three months. And in the lowest 
of the, th of the four quarters, two of the most of four quarters. And uh, from there on, you approach the system. But someone might not only be using it for irrigation. Someone might be using it to fill their pool. Well, we had a different, <laughs> we had a different yeah. 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 If the same resident lived there during that period, the family yeah. changes, you yeah. go from yeah. people to eight yeah. people. Yeah. You can have a great difference in music. Oh, yes, yes. Well, we are only two. I know. But <laughs> when you sell it, it might go to a larger house. Well, then, 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 of course, at that time, it would be you wait for the first quarter, if it's summer or winter, and you make an average of the two. And anything is possible. It only takes a little computer time or, the, or human time. One of the two will work. We'll certainly take it under consideration. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very for, coming for coming in. All right, next, uh, we're going to have public input. Understand so I can I'm sorry. I can do it. Yes, yes. Thank yes. You so You're much. welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. Well, <laughs> it's probably dry stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Not out of water. <laughs> Contract award in Barrington. I guess there's some people here from that who are interested in that. Maybe you'd like to make statements now during public. Uh, would you please come up, identify yourself, just for our record? Uh, before they do that, Alan. Yes, we have uh, a John Housie. Uh, can we just have a, a thumbnail report from Pam and Sue? Uh, oh, what happened? Uh, what happened? happened? And, sure. and why this gentleman is sitting here before us? I think I think, I think if we did you know, five minutes of explaining why they're here, we might be able to get a response. Yeah. response. Yeah. 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 Contract would not be supported by the uh, 
Clean Water Finance Agency for federal funding because it did not meet the requirements for the uh, did the e program. Excuse me. Did the other the other submitted bids comply totally? Uh, yes, they did. Did we do anything wrong when we sent out the RFP for the bids? No, it is. Uh, I have this additional documentation that shows it was mentioned several times in our bid documents that it was required to be submitted with the bid documents. Okay. Now, so the decision was taken out of my hands then? That's correct. Okay. And you don't really have any duty Okay. <coughs> so, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, just um, to state that it was in our um, in the, our specifications um, many times that we're using this funding. We did also mention it in the man mandatory pre-bid meeting that the contractors all um, attended. Attend. substance, um, I think that that's a significant amount that the 
rate payer shouldn't be paying based on a form that on its face where it says it's anticipated. It doesn't say anywhere on the form that you're required to use those individuals. Um, wouldn't seem to make you know much sense from, a, from my client's perspective as to why they would be excluded from the project based on those uh, situations. So we would ask certainly that the because I think if I understand where we are procedurally, there is a rejection of my client's bid. We would ask, obviously, that that be reconsidered um, and that they be awarded the bid as I think that they are the lowest responsive bidder to the, an eligible bidder. Sue, so, uh, who was it at the state level that rejected, that said that this bid has to be rejected? Uh, Dorinda Keene and also um, uh, Mr. Newton. They are in the um, state of Rhode Island Department of Administration Minority Business Office. If I can ask a question. Um, the Sue stated, and, and uh, Pam mentioned also that throughout the forms, there was some requirements that were stated here at the pre-bid conference and also regarding the federal requirements that had to be met, um, which apparently, you know, you weren't involved in at that time. So what does your client have to say about that? There's an EPA, there is no question that there's an EPA form, or three forms that I think EPA 6100. Okay. What do they say? Three or four, and they do say it gets submitted with the bid. I don't disagree with okay. that. But what I do say, what I say is that there's a conflict between that which is on well, form. Well, it's not a conflict. There's two requirements. There's the state requirements and there's the federal requirements. Both have to be met. The federal are more stringent. So if you had completed the federal requirements, you would have met the state as well. But by completing the state requirements, you didn't also right. meet the federal requirements. Can I just ask you a question? Was there a pre-bid conference before this? Yeah. Yes. None of this came up? Yeah. Uh, I did state at the pre-bid uh, that we are getting yeah. SRF funding and you must read the specifications you, to make you sure. You also you list three bidders. Did both the other bidders comply? Yes, they did. It, 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 from where I sit, I'm not mm -hmm. trying to be rude or anything. It, it, apparently someone made a judgment call. I'm not sure if you were uh, consulted and said, what should we do? I'm not sure if someone got a phone call there, here saying what they got they need from us. There also was a time period for the bidders to ask questions um, if there was any um, misunderstanding in the specifications. Right, and again, I, my, from my client's perspective, I don't think it's so much as a misunderstanding. I think the conflict arises after the fact that someone says you didn't need it. We believe it's a conflict. I, mean, I understand that reason people can disagree, but I think that reading the instructions where it says you must comply with the state of Rhode Island, they, they believe they did meet those requirements. And I also don't believe that the federal requirements are an absolute requirement that they be submitted pre bid um, But again, that can be, that there can be disagreements with Well, those. apparently two other bidders yes. did that. You have anything else to no. answer? I'd like to move along. Yes. No, Is there anyone good. else in the public who wishes to speak at this point? No, we did it. Please come up, give your name, sir. Mike Bisco from Bisco Contracting. Well, that uh, project was bid was bid on the base documents, as Scott stated. There was a conflict. We filed filed Rhode Island law because it stated the project was Rhode Island funded in the written documents. The written documents always govern. And that's the reason why it was bid that way. It, Rhode Island law, Rhode Island funded. We had 10 days to uh, submit the required documents along with the acknowledgement. That's just what I wanted to let you know. Is there anyone else uh, who wishes to speak on this issue? <coughs> My name is Bill Walsh. I'm with the W. Walsh Company. And I would just like to say that uh, the Bristol County Water Authority, when they make up the specs uh, for any project, first thing they have is an invitation to bid. And the second thing they make up is information for bidders. And in both of those documents, it says specifically that this information will be submitted with the bid. And, and we did. understand that, sir. Thank you. Does the board have a really uh, want to close public comment? Okay. Uh, Ken, are you here on a on an item uh, regard that's on our agenda, or do you just want to talk to us? Uh, just a couple minutes. So we have a another item for public input, which is not on this issue. 
without the full support of our three towns, it's it's really going to be difficult to go forward. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. We'll Keep us posted on the uh, meeting. Yes, sir. Now, on this this contract is we stated, you know, we bid the contract and we slaughtered on the Rhode Island law. We'd like to feel we should be awarded this contract. If we're not, we don't want to, you know, we probably will protest it, but if not, maybe it should go out to bid again. I understand your point. Thank you. Okay, anybody else from the public wish to speak? We close that section then. We move to the item that I said we move forward. That's J. Allen. Yes. So now the public. Please, Joe. Sure. Um, so if we, we have a, an unfortunate situation because um, while we have a low bidder, we do not have a low responsive bidder. And um, what you heard was that the um, low bidder interpreted bid in a way that was not correct. Um, I'm not going to take you through the whole the whole uh, invitation of bid. It's, it's over 200 pages long, but it, it's clear throughout the document that um, it's the bidder's responsibility to familiarize himself with um, you know, the local, state, and federal laws. Um, certainly, if there was a question of interpretation, then the any of the bidders should have clarified those. And, and that's really what, what didn't happen. Uh, but uh, it's clear, and, and there's reference throughout the, the bid, uh, that uh, you know, it references federal, state, municipal laws, ordinances, and regulations. Uh, it's also clear in the bid uh, that uh, the DBE form had to be completed. If you read the EPA uh, DBE form that was part of the package, it states on it that it has to be submitted with the bid package. Now, <clears throat> it's not this board's interpretation. That's not my interpretation. It's not Pam's interpretation. It's not Sue's interpretation. That, that is the EPA regulation. Um, and certainly, Pam and Sue did not take it upon themselves to make that interpretation. They did the right thing and went to the state. Uh, and went to the DBE office, and they specifically stated uh, that it's not compliant, and that in fact there are two sets of regulations. That this that you have to comply with both uh, state and federal regulations, and that's anytime you have a state revolving fund uh, project because there's EPA money involved. Anytime you're doing one of those projects, there's a number of different agencies that you have to comply with, as you heard, Department of Health, EPA. Rather than Clean Water Finance Agency. So there's a number of, of approvals you have to get uh, from all these agencies in order to get these projects funded and paid for. In, in fact, it's onerous. I mean, they're, they're kind of a pain to fund through, uh, through Clean Water Finance, but you get subsidized interest rates, and so it's worthwhile to do so. So it's unfortunate that the, that the low bidder chose to interpret it the way they did uh, but if you look at their form, they didn't fill it out. And that is unfortunate, but uh, the, the, the bid was not, uh, the, the, their submission was not compliant. And again, it's not an interpretation that's been made uh, by anybody in this room. It's by the state who's, who's administering the program. Uh, <clears throat> I can tell you that uh, this comes up in other, uh, with other utilities, uh, it's the state DBE office that interprets that part of it. They've made their interpretation. I know that we've, uh, that Pam and Sue, just to you know, really uh, dot the I's across the T's, also talked with the Department of Health. And the Department of Health said the same thing. It's not compliant. Uh, so I just want the board to know uh, that, uh, that uh, a lot of uh, work was put into this. It wasn't just an interpretation we made to knock somebody out. Uh, it, it, it is unfortunate because it was a little bitter. Uh, but Frankly, it's just, it's not a responsive bid, and I don't even think it's really close when you, when you really want to get that. Well, normally you have the right to overlook minor situations, but yeah, this, this is not a case of us overlooking it, it's no. a case of 
being overruled. And it wasn't minor, and I, I know I know they in their mind thought it was minor by looking at the regulations they did, but but it was their responsibility up front to make sure they were clear before they submitted that document the way they did uh, to, to find out what had to be done. So I just wanted the board to know that, uh, and really everybody to know that we didn't take this lightly, uh, that a lot of work was done, uh, that we looked at this closely and consulted with the, the, the proper state agencies on this. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, so now we need, we need a recommendation for a motion. Yes. Uh, it is an unfortunate situation, but I, I don't think we have much alternative. I, I'll make a motion at this time. We award the contract to W. Walsh, Walsh Company in the amount of $798,972.09. Second. Second. Bill, any further discussion? <coughs> yes, sir. And forgive my naivete. And, uh, I, it is unfortunate, as you say, and no one has done anything in the interpretation, but if it wasn't their intention to miss one form on a 200 page request, is there any legal way that we can review it again or submit it again, or is that too onerous to be reasonably done? I'm saying that because it is unfortunate to pay $60,000 more because the form was a problem. Well, it's, it's not a missed form. It, it's, it's, it's a form that was filled out a missed page on it. No, it wasn't missed. They wrote on it that they would they would provide the information at a later date. So it wasn't it wasn't as though there were some pages missing. Again, for you, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just yeah. looking for I my concern first and foremost is, you know, if they're an otherwise qualified bidder and they're sixty thousand dollars less, is there a way that we can make that happen? If there isn't and it's not then there isn't. I'm just gonna sh <coughs> so it wasn't this. They I understand. Yeah. And it was their contention that they were going to do it within 10 days, or and did they do it in the time frame that their interpretation said? Or it says, do be submitted if low yeah, bid. Okay, okay. I still will okay. That. thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I'd, like, I'd just like to make a comment. Sure. The, this thing really bothers me because of the fact feel bad for the <clears throat> for these gentlemen over here because to, it seems to me the only the only bad guy in this whole thing is that it, it's government overreach. Why why they go through the EPA to do social engineering for disadvantaged enterprise business. And I I feel bad because they got stuck in that kind of a situation, but it really is not our problem, I should say, because they did not follow the rules, but it's really the way we do business nowadays, which is unfortunate. So, and my only other concern is that if we did rebid, then the other companies would have a legal swap too. Sure. So, yeah. so I think we, all we have to do is go by what we have to live with. Okay, any other questions? Ready to vote. All those in favor of the motion to award the contract to Walsh at the prescribed amount, please raise your hand. Do you have a second? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yes. Yes, Bill, second. Raise your hand if you're for it. It is unanimous. Thank you. Now we're back to uh, minutes. Entertain a motion for the acceptance of the uh, Minutes of 326. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second one moved the acceptance of the minutes of 326. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Ready to vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Unanimous. The minutes of Thursday, April 3rd, the special board meeting. I make a motion. Motion to that. Second. Second here. Any further discussion? Ready to vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 It is unanimous. Executive Director's Report. Well, a couple things of note. We actually sold a little more water last month than... Uh, we had been in the past, so hopefully that's the start of a trend. 
Uh, speaking of Clean Water Finance Agency, we've been trying to obtain that. Can I ask a question? Why do you think we sold more water at this period of time? Does that make sense? Or hope we're not losing it somewhere. <laughs> hope not. But do you have any, any inclination well, why it would have gone up? With people school. moving out of the state? With the school? Mm -hmm. School? I don't no, know. It's just, it was a bit above normal than we had. But they vary from month to month yeah. on occasion. But By 5%? In general, our spring last year was higher than the year before. But then it declined the rest of the year. Okay, so that's, that's not unusual to see that. In that the really spring, it's not quite as unusual. Yeah. But our weather was so miserable, it was a little surprising. Yeah. Well, that's Didn't right. expect it, actually. Clean Water Financing. Trying to get some of our project approved so we can get the funding for uh, our uh, water main projects is uh, again they've become very restrictive on uh, the uh, documentation that has to be supplied before they even approve us to go forward. So we've been working with uh, of course Sue has been working with the Department of Health and. Uh, trying to define what it is they exactly need for all of the documentation and getting that into them so we can finalize our approvals. Uh, some of the other uh, municipalities have also been having some issues, so right now the bonds are on hold until uh, the majority of us are ready to go forward. We're hoping within the next month or two we'll have all of our documentation approved and uh, we can go forward with the bonds. Is there anything major that's holding it up? Just the uh, certificates of approval. Do we know why? Do we still have to post, they have to do a 30-day public input posting in order to get our categorical exclusion. Um, and that's going to go on the paper this week or next week, May 5th. So there's just, we're just, they can't physically issue the approval until that 30-day period is over. Right, so there's a cause. We're getting close. <laughs> We're getting That's close. close for you to get aggravated over. Well, the main issue with using the finance agency is the yeah. fact that Good we can, well, it actually ends up costing us about the same because of all the paperwork and all of the requirements that we have to adhere to, uh, even through the, through the construction period. So in the future, we'd like to go more to bank bonding. But with the Clean Water Finance Agency, they are putting off our principal payment for five years, which is an extreme benefit to us at this point in time for when our major bonds are paid off at that point. So right now, this allows us to keep our rates relatively low and not have to finance all of our construction projects immediately. So this is a big benefit. So we're working through the process. And we're getting there, <laughs> just a little slower than we expected. Uh, and really, the only other issue we've been dealing with this month is trihalomethanes. Uh, <coughs> we have to test for trihalomethanes at eight points throughout the distribution system every quarter. And then each of those samples is averaged uh, with the previous three quarters for uh, an annual average, a running annual average, which has to be below 80 parts per billion. Now recently, the EPA lowered that amount. It used to be 100 at one time. Then it was lowered to 80, but it was an average of all the samples in the system. Trihalomethanes, we've discussed before, it's a disinfection byproduct. It results from chlorine coming in contact with natural organics that are present in surface water from decay of leaves and so on. Um, and they uh, are more prominent in the summer when the water is warm and when you're adding higher amounts of chlorine uh, for uh, bacteria disinfection. Taking samples in January are usually our absolutely lowest numbers of the year. Our numbers came out more than double what we would have in any, in our worst case situation. So we challenged the laboratory results. Uh, we asked for their QAQC information. They had a number of small issues, nothing really major we could point to, other than the fact that every other utility that also <coughs> used this laboratory ended up with their numbers 
much higher than normal, especially for this time of year. All the other utilities that took their samples to a different laboratory ended up with low numbers like you would expect in January when the water is cold. So we took a second set and those numbers came out normal. And we split those between the laboratory we used and another laboratory. And they came out actually fairly close. And uh, so what we may end up doing is being able to average those numbers with the first set of samples we took because it's very difficult to get laboratory analysis thrown out unless you can prove that the numbers were, uh, that there was some problem in the analysis. It seems to me there's a mitigating circumstance here. And that mitigating circumstance is that the public, a segment of the public goes bananas when you have to send some form out that says, God help us, there could be possibly something wrong with your water. It's a public health issue. And if it's unnecessary, we shouldn't really have to alarm the public for something that doesn't bear alarming them. Is there, a place, is there a place that we can go and say, here's the evidence, we didn't find a smoking gun, but all these other, you know, just what you described. What about throwing those samples out? That's all. The EPA regulations are actually very tight and are very specific as to what types of samples can be thrown out. And it has to be that the laboratory pretty much agrees that there was an error in their method. If they'd like more business, I would think they'd agree. Well, they, going through their QAQC data, don't find any you know, anomal large anomalies that would actually cause this issue. We, they actually are allowed a 30% range in the analysis. So if we had 100 parts per billion, they're allowed to analyze up to, a, and call it up to 130 parts per billion, which is a significant change on our, on our part when we're held to 80.6, <laughs> you know, if we go over that. But we are 100% convinced that these numbers are not correct. Also, the city of Providence took a sample at their inlet point to our system the same day we did and their numbers were 30% lower. So we are definitely convinced that these numbers were not correct. We won't have a violation at this point if we're allowed to average the first set of samples we took and the second set of samples. But going forward into the summertime when the temperatures are up and we're adding more chlorine to the system, those number, our regular numbers will be higher. They would normally be in compliance, but because of these set of high numbers, our average is going to be over the um, violation limit. So we will be sending out notices at some point. Could we get fined? Violated the standard. Could we get fined if we go over the average? No. Not unless we, we don't do the notices as required or don't take any action. Now, the one thing we did do last year is we installed the trihalomethane removal system in the Bristol tank. By the end of this, by fall, we're going to be installing another system in the Barrington tank. Is there any but variation in the NOM? <coughs> very minor. It's, it's uh, Providence is supposedly, because we've all seen slightly higher numbers. For one reason, Providence had gone back to their higher pH. Um, so the numbers did creep up, up a little bit, but you know, within 20% at the most, Pain. not 200%. Mm -hmm. Pain, what so, about the delivery from Providence? Has, has theirs increased or? Oh, she said they took it at the same on their side of the delivery to us. The and their side. sample was fine. They took the sample the same day we did oh, at the okay. same point, I missed that. I'm sorry. and ours was 30% higher. Same the company. Same, the same, point same company. The opposite ends. Same testing people. With the, I don't know if they use the same lab. No, they use, they use, a, a they use lab. A, another private consulting lab, different than the one we oh, use. What you're saying is we need a new lab. Ah, definitely. Are you saying that's the same water? Yeah. Same water. Yes. Are you saying the same point, or was it one end of the pipe? The same the point. So they took one yeah, of the exactly. same thing to the same point, and two labs came up with two numbers that were 30% different. Yes. Okay. 
and this is the, the Department of Health that makes this rule. Yes. Under the EPA, they've also involved the EPA in this as well. And I've actually talked to the EPA, and they're reviewing all the data with the Department of Health. But they are very constrained as to what they can allow under the regulations. Higher problems as well. No. Can you think of any explanation why it would be different? None at all. Absolutely not. And what was the decision? Because we were not adding chlorine to the water at all, for one, one issue. And the water was still cold. This was early February. Trihalomethane started going up as the water temperature increases. And we started adding chlorine probably around May to the water. Interesting. And was there, what was the story? Wouldn't we have to notify anybody? We, oh, yeah. we will if we're found in violation. Now, that first set is in violation. Right. But we're allowed to average with a second set of samples. We took a second set within the required period. And they came out normal. So we're allowed to average those, in which case we won't have a violation this quarter. But as our sample, as the numbers go up through the summertime, mm -hmm. we have to include that high number in the, in the first quarter average. We're going to, we are most likely going to have a violation. That becomes that little mailer, right? That has to be sent out to everybody. It has to be sent out to every customer. And then yeah, describing as mandatory also. language as to what are the effects of trihalomethane. Can I say, have other companies that are not on the Providence system, have they experienced something similar to this? I'm just wondering if it's something to do with the period of time, the weather, or what? Would Kent County be, I mean, uh, Newport? Be Newport has a, has a problem with trihalomethane because they have a fairly poor source of supply. Oh, so initially they so have. they've always had problems. What about, what about Pawtucket? They don't care. Pawtucket is, does not have an issue. And they actually, with their way they treat the water, they are they are lower than uh, Providence, actually. How about Kent County? Pardon me? Kent County? Kent County purchases their water from Providence. They get it much closer to the treatment plant, but they've also seen higher levels of trihalomethane. Okay. Uh, depending something. what laboratory they're using, we looked at all the customers of Providence water, all the utilities that were purchasing water from so ultimately, The ones that used the same lab we did were higher. The ones that used a different lab were low and, and fell within their normal range. The one, what you're telling us is the variable is the lab. It's yeah. the laboratory. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. let's get the better lab. Well, yeah. But now <laughs> we're stuck because they might have to just disregard just that just information, which they should. Would they now, do we have to continue using that same lab going no. forward? We don't need to use the laboratory, but we have to use the number. It will, it will it go forward in our quarterly averages. Okay. Right. When and if we have to put out the card with the explanation to the public, can we say that we change labs, or is that inappropriate? Yes. We can add, we have to print their required language, and then we can add whatever we do want to, and we can definitely state these numbers convinced we're not correct and challenge the laboratory data, but we were constrained to use them. This is required to see. Yeah, we don't reality. believe there is any yeah. health issues involved in this. And if people read that form. <laughs> well, and that's only know, if we get a better test of results the second time, right? The other, the other thing is... Well, we ran we a, the second set of samples were normal, and we actually ran a third set that would go into this, this the next <clears> quarter, so it couldn't be average, and they were normal. Do you have empirical data that the other companies that use the same lab as us were finding similar difficulties? Yes. Then I think that compiling that and disclosing that at the same time would be proven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Uh, any other items that you wish to report? I hate to interrupt this, but yes, I'd just like to say thank you for your vote of confidence. Thank you for your time. Sir, we look forward to a good project. Thank you for all that.
Ray, you had a question? Yeah, I had a question on the director's report. Yes. Under the flushing, it says in the spring you're going to be flushing, you have a flushing program. And yes. at, the, at the end it says a note will also appear on the bill sent out during this time period. What, what basically are they going to say? Just that they're flushing or should they tell the customers what to watch out for or what is usually included in that information that's going to tell us? Um, usually we don't have much space so we'll say we're flushing. Uh, go to our website for more information. We put up a, a, a large bulletin on the website. We also have bulletins, like I said, on the local news channel. Well, access. I, the reason I ask is because and I we're remember. putting out signs on the streets yeah. too in the area. And my children are flushing in the water holes. <laughs> so, where is the receipt of bill today? Does that mean there's nothing being done in my area? Well, Bristol will be the last area we hit. So, yeah. well, right now, we're in Barrington. Because my, my water bill didn't have any notice at all. Uh, I think I saw a, a <laughs> sign on, um, I think it was Market Street. It must be where Swansea is. I don't know. It said flushing area today, this week, or whatever. My concern, head towards Route 6. My concern is I remember sitting in a meeting one time and a gentleman brought in some water that looked very cloudy and looked yeah. like mud. Yeah. And he said it was the result of flushing, and what he was angry about was the fact that even though they were flushing, he didn't know, he didn't know what the consequence would be because they were flushing. So that's what my concern is. If people suddenly start seeing brown water, they may not associate it with the flushing program. And I, it'd be nice that if we could, you know, somehow inform them ahead of time that to watch out for that, and if they do call or whatever, you know. I think I've seen that on the, uh, the local channels written, but maybe a, a news article. Just throw it in the, all three papers. I, I just don't want us to get bad press where people are going to be. Even on the website. I mean, they don't know what flushing is. No. Um, they don't know how it's going to affect that. So that's not. And, if, and if, it's done, if it's done early in the morning and someone doesn't get up at that time, and they yeah, fine when they do. But if someone gets up at, you know, 5 o'clock in the morning takes a shower, and it's brown over here. fill up their coffee pot and get ready to take a <laughs> What I mean, it doesn't is affect you with the coffee because the coffee is the same color. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> it might taste better. Uh, I get a different coffee maker. I pour it in the and it goes in. Do we, we don't do this in the middle of the night, do we? Yes. yes. Okay. We yes. start at 10 o'clock at night right. and we finish at 6 in the morning. Yeah. Okay. And everything is flushed until it's clear. But that's not to say somebody, if somebody was yeah, to somebody yeah. get flush their toilet in the middle of the night, yep. they might get a soda and brown water. Now I can tell when they're filling up the street sweeper at the bottom of Wood Street. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Any questions about uh, Sue's report? <coughs> or Andy's report, which were attached. Yeah, uh, yeah I had a uh, comment on Sue's, yes. Sue's report. Um, the project that we're going to be doing, it says narrow lane in Bristol. Is, that, is there a narrow lane in Bristol? Or narrow. is that narrow road? Narrow road. It says narrow is on the second page. Narrow lane. Page one, six uh, four. The reason I asked because my son was on narrow road. I want to tell him whether he's going to get project. You're you're in the arrows. I have a lane or a road or a byway or what? Narrows. Narrow lane in Bristol. I don't. Oh. The narrow lane or narrows road? It's narrows lane. It's the one that's attached to Hopeworth. If you go down Hopeworth, there's a road at the bottom. Not the very one that's right closest to the water, but next by the road. Are you familiar with Hopeworth? At the end, it has like a big um, circle. So there is a narrow lane. And what did I put here? Narrow, yes, narrows lane. Yes. Okay. And on the on the other page, you say Melrose Hopeworth narrows. Yeah. Yeah. Which is it? <laughs> There's a okay. difference in Bristol. Well, well Narrows is, know that, is off. Narrows, <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, the Narrows Road is yeah. the one off of Medica Yes, yeah. Right, it is not that. It's, it's Narrows Lane. So on the second sheet, it can say Narrows, it should just say Narrow. Okay. Yeah, it's a narrow Lane. For, so it is Narrow Lane. So it's narrow correct. Lane. It's like surgery. Don't do the wrong thing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. So I gave my son misinformation. I thought they were going to do Narrows Road. Okay. Make sure you tell the contract. 
Any other questions? We have sure. questions, Ray. Call for it before you give us. Yes. <laughs> Questions on Randy's uh, report? No, no. It's, I get the sense that we slipped a couple of weeks. That we were we were due to start um, already, and that we may not be starting for another few weeks. Is that is that what happened? Or we were still in a pretty still much the time frame we were okay. looking for. We were set up everything went perfectly. Right. We would have started a little. So they did have to do a third round of data okay. checks. <laughs> they did find a couple little problems, but from what I understand, everything's still going pretty smoothly. Okay. Any other questions? Financial report next. Oh, excuse me. I had a yes. I had a question on information that Pam had on. I don't know if you even have it. Uh, mm -hmm. The letter that was sent out to the representative, Ray Galveston. Yeah, Galveston. It was. It had some information about the phase one of the Tucker Pipeline project. Yes. And it said that phase one of the Tucker Pipeline project, a transmission main, is to be installed between East Providence Emergency Pump Station and the East Providence Water Storage Tank. But later on, it, a little further down, it goes in. It goes on to say the proposed section of the transmission pipeline will provide a direct link between East Providence and East Providence Supply. To provide emergency supply for both systems and at least allow each system to shut down, inspect, and maintain their respective cross bay pipeline when necessary. My question is if, could, we, could we be misinterpreting that? Could they, if we did that, could we supply all of BCWA's water? To that other supply, it, 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 it implying that we could shut down and test our system and totally depend upon East Providence, that connection from East Providence. We could for a short we period could. of time, yes. Without so restriction, guys. Well, that's something you have to work out with East Providence, but they're they're creating their a dedicated line to their tank with their existing pipeline. Right. We're also looking to create a dedicated <coughs> transmission line from the tank to the East Providence pump station, which is at our connection with our cross bay pipeline. So, so this would essentially connect the two cross bay pipelines together. So we would be able to so we would get be enough able water to through that line to supply our whole system. Yes. Okay. Is that the for a uh, period of time? Is that the four million dollars? And vice versa. And that's the four million dollars. <laughs> Which makes <laughs> a lot of sense to at least do that portion of the project as soon as possible. Because at least it gives us the backup between the pipelines. It doesn't solve the Providence, you know, a different supply situation, but it does, in that case, uh, solve the pipeline situation. Because right now, neither of us can shut down, inspect, or maintain those cross phase pipelines. Now you mentioned short term that that would work for us. Yes. How how many? When you say short term, general what, days. It would work for days, and depending on the time of year, probably longer. Summertime might be more of an issue, depending on the requirements of both systems. But it would be, a, it would allow us to actually schedule maintenance. Okay. Well, they use twice as much water as we do. These problems. I'm yes. just concerned, can they get enough water through their line to supply both them and us? Yeah. Certainly during most periods of time. Yeah. You know, high peak summer season might be another issue. If, if you say so. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if, if, I, if I may, before we leave this topic. Yes. Um, I, I had a question from Mr. Burke, and that's why I left and posed the question to him. Um, there's a sense of urgency about, uh, and, and I think it's important that we all realize what's, what's happening with uh, the Providence Water Supply Board and how reluctant they are of, of giving us our freedom to, to go to Kentucky. So they are actively, they are actively lobbying uh, on Capitol Hill to exclude uh, approximately $15 million of the same $5 million proposal to afford by the government. 
You mean the Providence water system? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I mean, yes. and, it, and, and, and that's a revelation to me because I, you know, I, 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 I may have the opinion that the 75, you know, we were, we were locked into that $75 million, approximately $15 million. But they are actively uh, pursuing uh, taking the 15 million, 13 and a half of that is for BCWA. Out of that proposal, leaving us high and dry. So that's why uh, that's why you see Ken here tonight. Right. Because it's really, really getting down to you know a gunfight. Now. That's why we're going to war. Yeah. That's why we're going yeah. to these problems. Yeah. So maybe that's why it's a good thing right now that Representative Gallison is the chairman of the House Finance Committee. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of pressure being put on you know the new speaker and and, and Ray is you know part of that team, but. I, I, there is a sense of urgency, uh, which is we why should, we wanted that we should be a resolution yeah. from the councils. And, and it, uh, what's disturbing to me is that it, it, you know it, it's a monopoly. They have province water supply as a monopoly, and and, and they like it. it. And they like it, you know. And, and I just want to relate that to you know. Frank, I, I suspect that the fact that when we produce the facts to to end up with a 2% increase, Yeah, that this this uh, went up sideways. And, that the, and the payback is the payback. More than a little bit perturbed that we brought the facts forward so they couldn't get the kind of money from us that they wanted. And part of it is undoubtedly payback. Yeah. And I don't think that, I don't think that, that should be lost in the discussion moving forward. I don't but think it will be. Yeah. I don't think and it will be. I, and I, thank you for that, because I, I was disturbing me why uh, now I know it really is a sense of Plus, I think I really should mention the fact that when I, I have been chair of the Water Resource Board, and when this was first put into the strategic plan for the Water Resource Board, I was the executive director of Providence Water. So, Providence Water did support this yeah. throughout the state as far as interconnection programs and the need for these. Backup supplies and so on and so forth throughout the systems. There's been a change in attitudes, yeah, I would say. And, and unfortunately, that change of attitude has a dramatic impact. Oh, sure. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Okay. You have given us a draft. Be brief. So sure. you're just going to, just the one you're talking about. I'm going to read about. the bottom line on the last page. It's, yeah. it, it's you know, let's, uh, not, let's not go through a lot of detail yeah. because people haven't had yes, a chance uh, to absorb it all. I, I cut out a lot of the assumptions I make and explain because the auditors don't want me to say too much about it because it could be subject to change. Okay. One of the one of the things that um, one of the things we've done this year, and I'm, I'll go back a little. I'm going to talk about the audit. I'm going to talk as little about this as I can right now. All right. Because uh, the, the concern is that um, you know this information is basically for your viewing, none of it is to be public because... We're not missing any numbers now. We, we don't, you know, we, until we have an audit through, because they they could make changes. If, if you remember last year, uh, they decided to write off um, a project on the old shad for $250,000, which added 250000 to the expense last year. There are uh, some things what we presented the auditors um, is what I call an extremely cleaned up. We went back and cleaned up a lot of stuff that was sitting on the books from 12, 15 years ago. A, because we're going to new computer system, I didn't want to bring a lot of that that we can't explain now, never mind trying to explain in a new system that's not fresh. So I had the discussion with the auditors there in agreement they're looking at all the things that I took some liberties with, either to write off, uh, add back into incomes. You know, uh, we had we had some give and take things uh, this year that we were able to uh, talk about, and we're in the process of doing that. The audit uh, started uh, Monday. They're actually working as we speak in my office, <laughs> so they're, they're working very diligently. Um, to, to the end result. Um, 
Mark, I think I want to say, though, that what you're talking about, things you're writing off are very well documented. Oh, it's very well it's, documented. It's not anything that you didn't know what they were. No, we didn't. You just kind we, of we said that. We have an idea what they were, but it's stuff that's been sitting in the closet for a lot of years that I knew we we've decided to take some action on. Not, 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 we're not, we're not talking about lodging no, muscle. Money. There are issues, not cooking a book. We don't a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of this to do with assets like the shad that's out there. But if there's some issues, they're going to give us a management letter, aren't they? They're going to raise these issues. Well, wait, I, I've already, we've already started discussions on some of them, and they're. They're all for us cleaning up okay. things, but a lot of it, a lot of it would be uh, something that might be in what we call an A order, which is it hasn't gone to fixed assets yet, but it's been out there for a long, long time, and if it looks like it's not going to have any real use to the authority, like design work on something we're not going to do, that that doesn't become part of the fixed assets, right. that they will force that into a write-off. So those. Those are the type of things I'm talking about. Whether well, I, I mean, rather than, my, my suggestion is rather than have any premature angst, right. so let's just wait and see what it is. Yeah, and right. then we'll just explain it all in one fell swoop. Yeah, right. So, right. A, lot, a lot of it, uh, some of it, I expect, I, I personally don't expect too many changes, but uh, we're, we're completely going through our fixed asset system move it to a new system, and during that time we're talking about changes in the life of assets. Right. We, we currently have, for years we've had the, uh, hydrants and meters used to be in one section, and they used to go in for 40 years. Well, meters don't well, last 40 years. Meter, meters now, are in a, with technology, they're in a lifespan of 10, 10 to 15 years at the best. So what we've done is we've gone through, we've segregated out those two categories to bring forward and bring the meters down, you know, leave the hydrants at, at 40. So it, it will affect our depreciation expense as we, but it's gonna, it's gonna wash a little bit how we do it. The other thing we did, I, I segregated this building, uh, was in a group called administrative, which also had some other costs in it. So I segregated just the building and the useful life of the building as a separate fixed asset category and took other things out that had shorter lives. So it's, it's more visible and that you can look at in more detail what the fixed assets are. Well, aren't all these changes you're talking about, don't they pale in comparison to the overall worth of our system, the lines, the tanks? Oh, absolutely. I mean, these, you're talking about fringe stuff. Well, we, we, we have uh, um, $82 million worth of assets. Yeah, so if you if you change several million, we're talking well, it's not, only about... That 82 is not going to change, no. but how I, we expense it. Right now we're expensing uh, one, it's 100000 a month, $1.2 million a year. So you look at, well, you get it. And uh, the total depreciation is around 20. So we've got $60 million that's being depreciated. So... You know, a little over a million a year, you're looking at 50 years, right. you know. So with some adjustments, that 1.2 million, again, it's a, depreciation is a non-cash uh, expense. So it doesn't affect our cash, but uh, we might be a little more aggressive on some of the things and, and, and keep things. There's a lot of changes. Will that, the audit be ready when we talk with the auditors next month? Right, we're, we're, we're on target. To, um, um, I, I, I set goals and milestones up with them on Monday of what we need. So we're looking at, um, they're going to have a first draft for me by May 16th. And um, <coughs> I have to write about the MBA, Management Discussion Analysis, a response back to them, right. which is the first part of the annual report. Basically, I call it like restating the obvious. You know, just discussing anything that was why certain things were were uh, out of whack or increases, and uh, they have to review what I write and go back and approve that. Okay, before it's allowed to be in uh, to be uh, scheduled in this part of the annual report. Do you see a need for a, a meeting on the finance committee? 
to discuss any of these things? No, right now. The interim? Uh, right now, there's, there's, there's nothing uh, of any nature that I, I don't think we're I, I've already touched on everything with them in there uh, as far as fixed assets and some of the uh, things we did as far as, uh, you know, when I said cleanup, I, I don't want to take <laughs> I just mean it's things that we may have not done it, thinking someday something's going to happen. But you know, there's a little, it's just little things. It could be three hundred dollars. It could be twenty five hundred here and there. I know that we're for the annual meeting. We have that's when we issue the audit, and we send copies of this to the, to the town councils and we post it. Right. Will that be the meeting that the auditors will come before us to describe things, or do you want to do that? Subsequent. No, I I think we're going to try to do what we did last year. In previous years, you've received the report at the meeting. And the, that the annual meeting tended to be more ceremonial, I think, voting of, of officers and things like that. That the, it's not a, you know, at the meeting, it's not the approval of the report, right. it's the acceptance of it. Right. Okay, so uh, what I did last year, I, I was I, I got a draft sent to all the board a few days ahead of time that you had a little time to look at it before we handed it out. So it's going to be very tight. Uh, what we did last year was we printed those copies for the annual report in house, right? Because we don't have time to send out and have the uh, you know, have it, everyone will get a copy of exactly. So, you're basically, if I hear you right, you're saying that it will be the June meeting when we'll sit down with the auditors. Right, if you wish. Well, I mean, yes, last I year we did. We did. Last yeah. year we did, and before I don't think we met with them until August or September. All right. But it, it, that would be fine. To, you know, it, I, I would suggest to wait till the June meeting. Okay. And it will give plenty of time, and then uh, any board members that have questions that, about a certain area of it. But um, they're a little, I told them, because I had promised at the last meeting I, I, I'd get a, something to you. Yes. But not take it with a grain of salt, but uh, don't dwell on anything that, you know, will work out. Uh, there's just a few things that jump out. Um, in February, I, I put a footnote on that page, on, on page one. The budget was so high in February for expenses because we had allocated two hundred thousand for the the dam cleanup. I don't mean I mean dam as in. <laughs> but when we the budget is usually spread out over a certain amount of months, but we didn't know. The 200000 we didn't know where to put it, so we put it in February at the end of the year. And if we did spend it before, we'd bring it back into that month. But we did not spend in that 200000 So, in essence, you take 200 out of the budget for February, we bring it down to 700000 uh, which isn't far off from what we actually spent. And um, that 200000 has been carry over into the budget for 2015. Okay. Because it, with uh, all the uh, things that have gone on regarding that, it's been delayed and, and stuff the start of that. Um, two other things, I just want to let members know, especially new board members, um, I sent a letter out to all the board members today regarding the audit. It's an annual thing and it, it's for all the board members that were on as of 228. So Joel originally had a letter, but they, the auditors pulled it because you were not on the board as of 228. This is because this is the audit of last year. Okay. So they sent a letter to Robert instead because he was the, we have to respond he was the director of record right. as we of have 228. To respond to those letters. But I, I do ask when you get the letter, uh, there's a little questionnaire to fill out regarding any concerns you have or whatever, that if you can get it back to the auditors fairly quickly, okay. I'd appreciate that. Okay. Okay. Um, other good news, um, we started the, uh, we 
just had a working March 1st with the new GL. I think I mentioned last time we're running accounts payable, um, payroll, and we are in position now. Usually we, will, we would have to wait until July to get March. Um, but um, actually, I've, I've taken down information from the old system that I can get revenues and things in there for March. So I may have a March report and an April report um, pretty quickly. So I hope to have March. I know I'll have March for by the June. So uh, at least. Uh, Under promise, over the look. <laughs> so um, everything's going to have a different look to it, a different structure. Um, but we're, we're quite happy with where, where that's heading. and. Um, it's going to be difficult to go back in June and go back and try to do March on the old system. But we're, we're doing it in pieces. We're comparing payroll. We're comparing uh, how stable. So we're, 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 not, we're not going to be able to go back and physically do the month on the old system in March and April. Are you going to supply us a copy of the chart of accounts just so right. curiosity is safe? Right. Okay. I'll give you kind of what the old was, right. and the, the new one is very clear categories. Um, I'm going to work with the auditors right after they finish to go through and recategorize, make sure I've got everything in the right category. Because they take our trial balance and they map it out to where they want it, into all these little secret compartments. So I'm going to try to mirror how they treat things. All right. um, so that's, uh, that's the good news there. Um, Thank you. If there's any, any, any specific questions, you can, if you want to get a copy of that letter, even because I had started as a 228. When, I know they sent it out there. What else? From last sure. year. 228 of 2013. Sure, I can get you. I appreciate it. Or if, 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 if someone wants to the copy of the letter. letter. Right. It like basically it. says, it has like four or five questions. Are you aware of any likely blank? Or are any concerns about likely blank? Or I the job I should have the information. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. You had a question, Ray? Yeah. I'm, I'm doing it probably not. I was just looking at the commercial expense over time was up up to seventy two percent. I guess my question is, who handles? Is it the commercial department that handles line breaks in the winter time? I guess I'm questioning why. The overtime has jumped up so much. Uh, it's not. No. It's not really. I'll, I'll tell you the problem with that is okay. in the commercial category, um, you're looking on, on the year to date. Um, it's a very small. Actual versus budget. Right. There's the year percent. to date on yeah. page four. Right. Yeah. The total overtime. For the year, it was only six thousand and change, seven thousand dollars. Right. Budget was four. Right. But what's happened with cross training? We have people that are earmarked that are in commercial that may be called out now because of cross training that they wouldn't have been. Okay. Okay. So they may be earmarked as a commercial department. So it would have been spread out between two different right. departments. Right. Really, you really got to look at the total of, of uh, commercial and production and where, where it stands. Well, that, but that's why I, I wanted to make sure I, know, I understand. Right. I, I, I did run the, the overall for the company. Um, for the company overhead was, for everybody, 4%. Yeah, uh, the production was down, down 31. You can't get out. Yeah, it was oh, out. Yes. Wow. <laughs> they can't get in. I think commercial is like one and a half, or whatever it is of that percent. Very, very small. Very on the outside and okay. okay. And overall, I think it's around 7% for the for, for operations. You know, but they're called out there on call, and you know, which okay. it's, it's dramatically under control versus when it years ago when it was 15, 15, 20 percent. All right. Okay. That's it. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Mr. Palmer. <coughs> Cross control initiative.
it's all up the full channel, basically. Yeah, right. and actually, Randy, based on your question, we took a look, better look at the website and how accessible the information was. We found it a little confusing, so actually we had Randy set up a program where now you can go into our website and the actual uh, dates will come up for the videos, and you know, he's created a direct link to the video, so it makes it a lot simpler to, to look it up the specific video that you want to see. So it's still up the full channel, to get but it. But it's still up the full channel to get it posted. We can just the average guess has the been like, I think the average has been like about a week and a half, at least. Oh, really? Sometimes two weeks. So I don't really watch those things. You'd oh, be yeah. surprised. <laughs> you will be surprised. I had people say to me, I saw you on TV, and I said, well, who really watches those things? But yeah. they, they do. They do. I think so that that's process. why I was just wondering, because there's some people that like to follow and or have a question about a particular meaning that something that was on the agenda would follow through. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 part part of that process has been slow. <laughs> Yeah. It is on the website now by the dates. Yes, he's so made it not, easier to find a, where you're looking for. To get it to the point where it gets to YouTube, it's not as simple as just hand up. I mean, Full Channel's going to do it when they can do it. Then it's got to be posted, then they get it. I mean, so you know, I don't think a week or 10 days is not a uh, Unless we want to pay to have it streamed directly, which some councils do, but that's going to cost us a pretty penny. No. I just want a lot of people who are looking at it that way. No, well, we're doing that having tinted too, so we'll look at it. <laughs> okay, so is that it? I can help you. We're moving on to uh, RFP on K. Pam, you're on. This is uh, actually for public relations services. It's more specifically for helping us with some of our documents that we're required to put together. The annual report was one. This board expressed uh, specifically that we obtained some help to do uh, right. a more presentable uh, annual report. Um, so we did hire someone last year and again this year for a minimal amount. Uh, but there are other projects that we need to do. The um, consumer confidence report, we want to look at uh, getting some articles into the newspapers. We wanted to do a little more targeting, maybe with social media. And so I asked for firms that would be able to help us with that. For, um, and if you go over the, in a course of a year, over $5,000, you have to have the services bid. So I did bid them so we would have the option of using one firm or another. Now, when I, I got two excellent bids, uh, both have had previous experience with the BCWA. Uh, one had a social media group that seemed like they were less expensive, uh, probably a younger group, maybe a little less experienced, but maybe be able to help us with targeting some of the issues we wanted in that media. Uh, whereas the other firm is one I've been working with, very professional, uh, does an excellent job. Actually, the person I'm working with is very knowledgeable about water and water issues. So it's is that the RD, very RDW? RDW, yes. Are the D's related? Yeah. I believe so. <laughs> by, by, by marriage. <laughs> that might be. Uh, do you have a, a, a dollar amount? Uh, well, I basically... I know you said 5000 I don't know whether you have to put the bid or... Right, and I mentioned in the bid specs it would be less than 10000 per per year uh, overall. They're but, going to be used only as needed. As but needed. it would be only as needed, and, they, and we would have to we would submit a specific task order for specifically what we needed, and then they would have to give us a price for uh, that specific project. And I'm assuming that as you as you go through this process, you'll keep the water price of what Certainly, uh, and hopefully you'll be seeing some of it. Do we need a formal uh, approval? Yes, because it's, uh, I'd like to award it to the two okay. organizations. And I think, I think, Alan, we, we've done this in the past. Oh, sure. In the past, sure. Uh, this is not unusual. In fact, one of the things that Pam and I were talking about earlier, uh, nobody reads the annual report. Yeah. And, and we go to a lot of trouble to create a lot of good information in that annual report. We were talking about the idea of taking a page or an article from the annual report and then 
putting it in the newspaper, sending it out, uh, you know, a piece at a time. Okay, that, you know, if you want to see the whole thing, look at our annual report. It's online. But here's a here's a document. Here's, but, here's yeah, my, my point is, we, this is not unusual. Well, not at all. That, and, not and, at all. And my recollection is that every time we did this, it was to our benefit. Yeah. I mean, to the rate right here. So you're making a motion then? So to move to approve second. this. A second. This is to approve as presented. Those with any discussion? Those in favor, say aye. 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 It is unanimous. Thank you. Chairman, I, I'd like to jump back to my one of my agenda items. Sure. I think that, What's that everybody else has this. What's that? There's an attachment F in yes. your program. It should be. Yes. Okay. <coughs> it's on cost issuance. Uh, yes, it got attached to the financial. The best practice? And it was the yes, uh, best practices. Yep. Yeah, I, hope, um, I hope people had a chance to, to go through it. This is about issuing bonds. Right. Basically. Attachment, the attachment is, is titled the best practices on the cost of issuance and current in the pub publicly offered debt transactions provided by government financial offices association. It has recommended steps that could be taken when you're going through a bonding process. Um, and if you look at the pretty much the bottom of that first page where it says recommendation. I'd like to read a few excerpts from it. Um, the Government Financial Office Association recommends that finance officers be aware of the parties likely and necessary to be involved in the transaction and be prepared to select these parties in a manner that ensures that needed services are obtained at a fair and reasonable cost. Additionally, an issuer should Carefully review all invoices and ensure that an expense is not billed to multiple parties. And they go on to list the, the players that are usually in the, in the uh, issuance of bonds. One of them being like the financial advisor. And if you turn to the next page, there's a section on that. And at the very bottom, it recommends, this, this is part of the recommendation. It said fees can be paid to financial advisors on an hourly or a fixed fee basis. However, financial advisory fee may also be based on $1,000 per uh, par value. Uh, that's one. I believe in the past we used First Southwest as a financial advisor. But that was after a bid process. We went, I mean, we went through an examination right. I, I've already, I already requested a estimate on the bar coming one. Uh, Okay, can I finish for Okay, I'm an Alan Dressman. Again, legal counsel, which is another player in the field, uh, and it recommends like these fees can be assessed based on a flat fee or an hourly based billing. Um, and for trustee, even trustee fee, the selection of a trustee should be done through an RFP process. Now, I'm not sure if we do that, but. Um, and one more, one more player being the, uh, the rating agency. And it states, states here that rating agency fee quotes can be obtained by the financial advisor or the staff. But it says fees are and should be considered negotiable. Fees vary, de vary depending on bond size and security and so on. My point of the whole thing is, I would like to see us get in at, at least develop, and I don't think we've done this or have this, a process or a procedure that goes through these steps. Um, as far as I know, we've never established a process and what type of services are going to be needed to secure a bond, who the players are going to be, or what basis they're going to be paid at. I mean, generally we only see a breakdown of who got what amount after the fact. You know, when the cost of issuance comes right off the top of the bond, so you don't really see that uh, accounting factor. To me, that seems like a blank check to just go through and have all these people do these things and then know after the fact what it's going to cost us. So we end up getting a, we're doing a bond, and then we only get so much money out of that bond to work with. So I would really like to make a motion that the DCWA formulate and adopt a policy based on the 
government finance officers association guidelines, best practices, and recommendations for controlling cost of bond issuance. Is there a second to that? Second. Question, Mr. Chairman. My, my recollection uh, is that uh, when we've gone through this process before, we, we, we go into executive session and the costs are explained. To, that's my recollection. Yeah. And it's laid out to us in black and white. So there's no, uh, nothing. But it's done in executive, executive session. Now, I don't, I don't understand uh, Mr. Palmieri's request that you want to continue to do an executive session or uh, now that you're, well, well, I, you know. All right, if I may answer your question? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, My point being is I think that we should have a policy that lays down a procedure just like when we send out work to a contractor that we're going to do, we're going to find out who the players are in the field and get the best possible quote of pricing from that and have a formulated policy based on these recommendations. Well, I, I don't think that's that. anything different than without a written policy. A written policy. We have been doing that without a written policy. You want a written policy. Exactly. I mean, I, I don't think that we want to have the impression by your motion that we just said, let's take the highest amount of money that we have to pay and automatically do that, okay? That's the inference that you're making. And, and, and I, and I uh, am making a comment to say, hey, it's not been a written policy, but our people have been responsible and have kept us clued in on every step of the way toward duties bonds. Well, and that was exactly, exactly my point about how it's explained in the well, session. And, and I mean, my question is this. We've already got the six million down, right? That bond is, is, is set, we just aren't drawing on it. And it hasn't been awarded yet. Okay, all right. But, but the process is there to award. When's the next bond that we will need? When will the next bond be issued? Well, then we'll also be looking at doing a, a bank bond for about $2 million okay. this year. Then it will probably be a couple of years before we do another one, in which time frame we had previously agreed that we would solicit for yeah. uh, financial advisors and bond council once again. Because I think it was explained why we picked the advisors that we picked this time. I, I just like, like to go over just a few of the points. A lot of these things are based on a, maybe a large city or something that might have a staff. A lot of these things um, we, we rely heavily on uh, bond advisors to point us in the right direction. Yeah. Whether it's I'll tell you how the rating agency works. You know, we need a rating to do the next bond. S and P gets back to you and says, uh, "Okay, it's thirteen thousand eight hundred dollars for a private rating. It's twenty one thousand six for a public rating. That's it. I mean, there's no negotiation in that number. Rhode Island Clean Water charges a flat one percent." Um, it's like a points when you get a mortgage. Flat 1%. That's it. That's, that's 1% up here. Uh, the, uh, I got What if instead of a motion, what if we just say, let, let Mark meet with the finance committee, ask all your questions, let him explain to the finance committee the process that he has followed, so you can see what it is, and then you can decide how formal you want to be with this. Right. Well then, let me ask this question. If you have a procedure that you go through, why can't it be formalized? Why can't it be a step-by-step -step procedure? Why, I'm not asking for anything unusual. I'm just saying that. We've already done that. that. We haven't done that. We've retained certain Show people. me the policy. We've retained okay, certain we don't people have to advise us on certain things. And that's the people we go to. We don't have a written policy. That's what he wants. It's a written but policy. But we still accomplish the same end. You're right. However, we're, my we're reason. a written policy for everything. My reason for saying this, and I think yours, John, is that we're right in the middle of an audit. We're right in the middle of a computer changeover. We're right in the middle of a lot of things. Do we want to start doing this now, which is going to be another 
chunk onto Mark's plate to deal with right now? That's what I'm asking. Can I make a suggestion? Um, I think that the purpose of a written policy might be that should a question come up on how we award a bond, that we will follow the written policy. I agree with you that giving him extra work right now might not be a good idea with what he's looking at. But I think the Finance Committee, like you said, could at a convenient time sit down and work out that written policy. Because I think that from a public relations point of view, having that in case a minority of people decide they want to raise an issue, to have something that we follow would be a nice thing to have in our pocket. Well, one thing, uh, hold on a second. So did you want to say something? Uh, I just want to say that I, the, 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 the fees would not be disclosed in executive session. The, the fee, Mark's right, that taking a step back, we talked about this last time, was you know, what we would go out to bid for, in fact, I think we went out to bid First Southwest. Right. And that didn't for the legal counsel. But there was a reason why we did Yes, because uh, Sandy was already familiar with it, and it would, uh, for the timing of the bonding, if I remember correctly, it just made more sense to do that. We said next time, right. all that would pop the bond. But I think Mark's point is well taken is that some of those fees that you were, if you're referencing Ray, wouldn't necessarily be subject to bid because you're going to get two fees. But, but I think I think the larger point, if you wanted to say, look, when we go out to, you know, when we go to do our next borrowing, here are the steps. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's uh, probably what I'm saying. Finance, yeah. What I'm saying That's is, just right. as they recommend in here, we need to, we need, the staff needs to determine who are the players are going to be. Are we going to have a financial advisor? Are we going to have all this? And, they have to go through a checklist. Say, well, right, we need, we, do we need this person or don't we need this? And who is, gonna, who is it gonna be? And what requirements are we gonna put upon them? I would put that before the finance committee. I don't know that you necessarily wanna give staff um, discretion as to decide what they do and don't need. I mean, there are certain things when you're bonding that you should have. Financial advisor. So I don't know that, you know, this is something I think is going to be worked out. Probably it's better to be worked out in the committee to say, what do we want to give them discretion on? What do we don't want to give them discretion on? You know, a lot of that stuff really probably should come to the to the board rather than, and I think you have to decide. That, that, that's my point. Yeah. I agree. I agree. That should come to the board. All I was asking for is to formulate, to formulate some sort of structured strategic way of going about it. Right now, what we're Whether doing. you do it informally now, then just, yeah, I, this is what we do. If you, if and you write it down. Maybe not now, but if you sat, you know, because Mark would probably take you through. Yeah, you don't have to do it. And I am not, I'm not calling for this to be done yeah, no. immediately. If we're not going to be bonding in it for another year, right. then at least before we go and do that, is all I'm asking, yeah. that we have some sort of <coughs> formulated policy or procedure that we're going to go through this checklist and this is what we're going to do. All based on all based on this recommendation. The government finance financing officers association. They must know what they're talking about. So I just thought it would be a good I, idea to get in. I mean I, 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 I think the fact that the way you said it was we did I you take well, a little yeah, bit yeah. off it. <laughs> that we just throw this up and the child what they want and we sign the check. It's not that way. I, I you know the last bond, the refunding, and I mean, I went through everything, and, and just to give an idea, I mean, we did vote for Southwest. We put their faith in it. We voted for Sandy to be our bond attorney. She, she gave the rate. They do their jobs. I've already asked Sandy for an estimate on what the cost of issuance will be on this next seven million dollars. She broke it down for me, of what she expects, and, 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 uh, and a lot of it's well. This is the Water Resources Board's attorney. This is what he charges. I expect it to be this. The uh, the trustee that's going to handle your account uh, is going to have to be U.S. Uh, U.S. Bank by virtue of how it's written in Boston. So that there's very little that we yeah, have the flexibility with. Can't we get? Can't we get a 
fee basis? How, how are they going to get? How are they going to get paid? Do we ever do we establish that ahead of time? Are we getting a flat fee? Are they getting an hour, hourly fee? And if they're getting an hourly fee, are they required to account for those hours that they put in? That's all I'm asking. Some they sort of never right. account for the hours that they put in. If that's your goal, you ain't going to get there. Well, right. You're that's not going to get there. That maybe it, it is it is it is hourly based. But you're but not. They, they don't know what they're up against. <laughs> all right. They don't know what they're up against until they do it. And that's, that's, that's what that's that's about these recommendations. Right? What about these recommendations? Government GFO. Government financial office like right? government interference. The government financial office. These are workers of the government. All right. Got something. We got a motion. We got a motion. We got further discussion. This is to set up a formal policy for bonding. Is anybody here ready to vote? All those in favor, raise your hand. One, two, those opposed. Okay. What is the problem? Wait a minute. Don't be so upset. Filling uh, Robert Alio's spot. to investigate this to learn what parts we may control and what parts we may not be able to control. That makes sense. And, that, and do it to a committee. Sure. If I, I agree with doing it to a committee is the best way to do it. Okay. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. You're on the committee. I just want to know what kind of poop I just stepped in. Where is the big pile? You have something on the agenda, Alan. Yes, really. we have the notes in there. The real the the uh, council in Barrington, after a lot of prodding and what have you, ultimately listed the uh, reasons for eliminating the Barrington directors. Barrington directors, sure, off the board. They're the only ones that have done it so far. Well. Uh, that took a lot of work, but there it is, and I just wanted everybody to see it so that you would know what Barrington did. And I know that there were various comments made by the different town councils. We don't have to listen to what the other town council does. We have our own reasons, but that's what Barrington did. So I'm just saying it's done. There is something there for the three of us. There is nothing I get yet for the rest, and if you can use that material to get your councils to do something. Do you are favorable to this kind of thing? This I, is I, part I, of the I, state I, law so the best that they got enacted, the to be that they have the right to do this. Yeah, it, I, if I may, it actually, you know, when they revised the last DCWA Act, it said they shall. So it's required in the law that they develop those formal uh, reasons for dismissing the director. Okay. Did it say in the law that... The reasons, or did they create them? Themselves? No, they created them. Each each council can create their no. own. It's number a, number it, five, Brad, is really nice. The one that surprised me. The, the thing, the <laughs> thing <laughs> that I don't understand <laughs> is number five, and I, I find it extraordinarily bad in the sense that I think we're careful. We're, we're appointed. appointed. You're on television. To be insubordinated. We're uh, we're appointed by the individual boards. But we are mandated to be directors of an independent agency. That's correct. For which we have authority for all of the ratepayers and all of the citizens of the three towns and the three towns. And we're supposed to act independently with our own, it's an independent authority. I, I just feel that. I'm wondering whether or not this is just an illegal or un, an unlawful requirement that just chills our ability to make an independent judgment, which we may believe is necessary for the for the good of the entire authority in three towns and the people. Here's an example: the Papa Squash Road project. Now, obviously, the council in Bristol would tell. The, the members, their representatives, to vote that we should finance that totally. Right. It's in their best interest. We said no because that's not the way that we operate. 
and we ended up with a compromise there for the difference in whatever. Uh, and, and so to, to throw off, if they had that rule in place, to throw off the, the members from Bristol because they didn't all support Or that. alternatively, if somebody, if the, the Barrington board said, we don't want you spending money on something in Warren or Bristol, yeah. I think it's just a, an un, unduly influence on our, our in, independent right. So my question is, is that, what do we do about it? I don't have a problem about coming drunk to the meeting. <laughs> I want, you know, if I gotta do it, I gotta do it. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I mean, that to me is just a really a undue influence. Well, the question is, 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 is are they applying it to all boards and commissions? No, no, no. 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 And, and, and I gotta tell you, to be frank, and I'll put it on, on the table because I don't care. Uh, they're about to instruct the Committee on Appropriations in Barrington, the Town Council, to spend money that they're asking for after the date that the Charter requires it, and there isn't a snowball's chance in heaven that this Committee of is going to vote for it. The answer to your question, Brad, is they have every right to write this, and they have every right to vote me out of the office when I say no. Yeah, but it seems to me that, I, and I don't know, I'm just talking generally, that we have an obligation to act independently on behalf of this agency, and they can't direct us to vote in a particular way because it chills our ability to make an yeah. independent judgment. Well, so I'm wondering if it's necessary, and I just throw this out for discussion, whether we could uh, uh, consider a motion that he, two things. One, that our legal counsel makes a, some sort of an opinion that number, number uh, five is unlawful, or, or alternatively, to submit a question to the appropriate state agency, if there's a, a state board of ethics, to say that you can't interfere with it. But I, I would like to because I, I feel strongly about it. I feel strongly about the boards. You know, when you appoint somebody. I have, I have, I have exactly <coughs> the, the way you want to go. Are we employees of our town councils? No. no. Because no. only employees can be guilty of insubordination. And that's Joe, do you have any feel on this? Look, I, I think Joel's right. They, they can pass whatever they want to pass. I mean, I think that if, I think, first of all, if you feel strongly about it, it's something to be addressed to the, to the Barrington Town Council in the first place. I don't think me writing anything saying I'll that it's, <laughs> that it's, I'll be thrilled to it. That, that it's well, I think, or, I think it should, I I I think it should be the whole board. Let's the Barrington no. Town Council know that we don't agree. No, no I don't think so. Man. Not just no. the Barrington members. But I, I think I think Brad is a lot of overreach. You know, it's probably not that much different than what you and I would tell a client. Like if the law is there, wait till they try to enforce it. And and so what are they gonna do if they tell you to vote no on a Great. project? Uh, if they don't want and you don't vote and you don't vote no, how let them deal with Trying to remove you. Or, or a rate increase. They could tell us not to vote on a rate increase. Yeah, yeah. a rate increase. And they do on every a building project. We and it, and it's the same situation I'm in on, on appropriations. I'm going to vote my conscience. And in fact, they made a very big deal. And Brad will remember when I got appointed, you know, the Stockholm Syndrome question. And, yeah. uh, and my question was, am I, I said, I'm going to vote my mind. I was very clear on exactly what I intended to do. And I said, nobody is going to. Do that. Well, I just find that this particular board, I don't have any problem saying about it, seems to interfere with matters that they're really not supposed to. I mean, they should be concerned with what the people of the town of Barrington elected them to do. And uh, for instance, the business about um, removing the ability to appoint a secretary and a treasurer yeah. was something they meddling in their own business. Yeah. And, and that, that, I can honestly say, that was personal. Right. Because even when Joe got up and said it's going to it's going to cost us money to do so. Mr. DeWitt said, I don't care. So anyway, if you want to write a letter, so I'll, I'll, I'll look at it. When it's personal, you really... Well, I mean, I'm going to be there Monday, and I'm going to say, I looked at this, and there was a consensus, if you like, for a better word, that taking away the free will of a board member is in contrary to what you yourselves asked of me when I was appointed. So Ask them to give an example. Say, number five, what would I be in violation of? Tell me what you want me to do. I don't do it. And I'm in support. So we don't and I'm in support and worthy of being terminated. Because you might as well terminate me now because 
God knows, anyone in Barrington knows that I am the most insubordinate SOB you're ever going to come across. No. <laughs> so we don't know if you're going to be back next week. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, the BCWA the, the, the right, anyway, anyway, so is an entity in itself. Right, right. So that right. we do function as a separate entity. Sure we, we shouldn't be able to tell you. But, like you said, I guess they can write a rule to say that if we don't like the way you vote, we're going to get rid of you. Now, that may, that's pretty structured, but you know they may be able, they could do that well, even without stating a reason. They could not. Bring I'm not aware. Not, that's one. not that's not that's not reappointment. Yeah, okay. and that's the, that's not removal. removal. That's, that's just not removal. And I'm on four committees. I am not aware of any other committee in the town of Barrington where anything like this exists. But I think it's bigger because this is an independent. Sure, well, as is the Committee on Appropriation. I review no, the budget. No, but this is an independent body politic that's not part of the town of Barrington Correct. whatsoever. They have yeah. the ability to put members on. And I'm certainly uh, welcome to listen to their advice and their comments. But I, I think just we're now empowered to act independently on behalf of three towns and citizens of three You're towns. Absolutely. You're and make an independent judgment on those decisions and not be chilled to say, you know, I got you can't no, do it. I got no problem taking the heat on this one, guys. I'll be happy. I know when this was um, the town of Warren's concern, when they had the, uh, the subcommittee and they had, uh, I think, uh, part of it, Warren's concern was how can we remove any, appoint any person that's been appointed not just the director for the war, but what about the planning board and the zoning board and the historical society or whatever? Now they haven't, as far as I know, they haven't implemented anything yet. Their concern was we don't really, we don't have a policy to remove anybody. Well, if, they, if it's an ethics violation, yeah. have a charter right. that takes care of. Yes. It. Okay. See how the, how separate thing. how this came about is when we were when we were discussing this at the Warren Town Council and the subcommittee that was reviewing the legislation. Mr. DeSisto, the town solicitor, said that there is not a formal policy in there, that it doesn't have, there is no process that you can go through to remove someone. Correct. You cannot reappoint someone. And that's what he was trying to emphasize to them, that they should really have a, a document that said, where well, right. you can be removed for these particular reasons. And that's how it got in the legislation. Right. But this here, clearly, I mean, that's, that's not a process. That's well, anyway, right. it's there for you to look at. And undoubtedly, the three from Barrington will have something to say to our board. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Article uh, number eight, uh, Article eight of the Tucket Piper. We've already talked about all that. Those of you who go to the meetings will do so. Uh, the board correspondence was attached. Our next meeting, instead of being in Barrington, the annual meeting, we're going to hold it here Makes because sense. we don't have all the little kids to dole out the stuff. We only have the, the leaders of the, uh, the, the science, science fair. So we just hold our annual meeting here sure. on the 29th. Good. So I, a motion to adjourn. Is that a Thursday? It is yes. on Thursday. Good. Thursday. Thursday. No, I'm busy on the Wednesday. Right. I have one question. Sure. Um, um, the, the letter that came from Owen. Oh, yes. Uh, it was mentioned in there that um, we have an agreement now with. Uh, well, she answered the question. Right. right. But has that been announced to the public yet? No, we just signed it. We haven't signed the contract, we just finalized the contract. So okay. we will be announcing that. We'll post it on the <coughs> website and try and get an article in the newspaper. And I know the answer to it, but I'm going to ask the question anyway because I was asked by a constituent. We do not profit any part of. No. Uh, just, uh, not at all. It's totally fair. voluntary to the customer. We've had a lot of customers ask for it, actually. And uh, set up the same system can in Pawtucket and Providence. Can we find out what they would use because we don't take it? Is it a percentage of dollars? Yeah. It's usually around $10 or so per customer, is what I remember. But we never accepted it either in Pawtucket or Providence. Just that's a piece of information I'd like in my pocket when I get asked. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there are people that are reading it and blaming the water company. Oh, yes. Yeah. There we I, 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 I remember that. Yes. Even though it's explained in there that they're not part of us, they still say, damn water company. Well, it will be going out under our shared letterhead with the company just to say that we bid this, we've overseen the requirements that, um, for the contractor. Uh, 
he is our recommended contractor uh, for this service. And uh, essentially, it's absolutely no cost. We are not receiving any additional funding from the contractor for to be able to do this, but it is strictly as a benefit to the customer. May I suggest that, in addition to that, uh, you announced that we have a rate less, this much less, because we are not profitable for it. I know it's ridiculous, but it's what they're going to want to. Well, if I'm going to say an exact number, I'll have to get that from the company. I know, yeah, yeah. I know you have to, but I'm saying, when make it public relations, make it clear that you're saving this money because of the decision we made. Can I ask so the It's actually discounted. Yeah, I know, but I want, that's how they'll be. Have you, got, have you got calls from customer service, people questioning this or complaining about it? Not no? Yet. Oh, good. Okay. Not yet, because we haven't really advertised it. Well, no. We had approved it in a board meeting. Well, it's something that's been made, so. so. We, I have had several calls on this home serve people, because they've been blanketing the area with advertisement. Yes. Is there a motion to adjourn? Those in favor say aye. 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 Aye